Hey guys, happy Saturday everyone. Welcome back to our daily stock market insights. Today is Saturday, August 1st, 9.55 p.m. here in Manila, Philippines. And uh, as always, our daily rigor, we are going to talk about uh, your requested stocks. Yesterday was a holiday, so we also took a holiday. But again, we want to make sure that we are ready for uh, the action come Monday. So I will be uh, recording your requested stocks at the same time if uh, your stock is not included in uh, <clears throat> my review today. Feel free to drop a comment so that I can uh, include your request in tomorrow's episode. Okay. In the meantime, before I get started, I just want to promote my brother's YouTube channel. Okay. So this is his YouTube channel, Tutu, Tutu Mon Factory. In Elongo, it's like Toto. <laughs> so it's his, I think, um, you know, uh, unique way of naming his channel. Two Two Mon Factory. That is his channel, guys. So I, I know a lot of my uh, viewers here are men, and I think you'd love his videos here. He likes to do um, DIY stuff about cars, about I don't know what other stuff he has here, but I know these are parts of the car, and uh, it's, it's like his uh, mini factory or workshop over here. So I, I don't really understand these parts, and I don't know where they're used at, but I guess you guys will understand his uh, niche. Okay, so try it out. Uh, watch his videos. I think uh, his videos are really good. Uh, a uh, very creative way of uh, presenting his his uh, concept. Okay, so if you can subscribe, that would be also awesome. In the meantime, let us go ahead and discuss your stocks. Okay, so let's first talk about uh, our index. Let's see if we were able to recover. Ah, uh, so technically on the sideways movement uh, as of the moment still. Right, no major, major moves in the past uh, week. So I'd say uh, we're not moving our support level, and I think uh, we'll still be plotting it right over here. Uh, this <coughs> because I saw this, or it could be here as well. But um, this one is a safer way to look at it. Yeah, see that. So 5,829 levels, so I think it will just do um, sideways first, trying to uh, create a much stronger support within the range before it takes off. Hopefully it doesn't uh, break down in price anymore. And um, with the sauna that uh, Duterte, President Duterte did um, last week, uh, I think with, uh, it's not just last week anyway, um, there were already several news about vaccines being developed, um, not just in one area, but in different countries now. And they're already in their final stages of their research and development. So when these um, get launched or made available to the public, I think people now will be more confident and will feel safer to go out and do the business and then eventually our economy not just in our country but around the globe uh, will recover and uh, along with that of course is the recovery of our, of our stocks because uh, most of the stocks that we have right now they're on the defensive side very conservative movements um, with little bounce people take profit again so that's what I'm, I'm looking at conservative place in most of our stocks at the moment but then again let's have uh, let's take a look at the individual stocks so that we have a clear understanding of how they're performing so okay so first stock to review is our Ayala Corporation okay so Ayala managed to bounce uh, at the um, support here so it, it did a, a bounce slight bounce over there but uh, one thing we need to take note of is that 
uh, there is an MA20 line here that could act as a resistance. So in case it moves higher here, uh, just be very observant and see if uh, it will manage to break that uh, resistance and create a brand new wave to the upside. Otherwise, it will still follow this downward uh, channel over here. And uh, for now, I'm plotting 710.77 as our support and see if uh, the market, market gives you a chance right there. But overall, I think people are still taking profit because it has rallied um, significantly to the upside for the past how many months. Okay, the next one is uh, ACEPH. <clears throat> wow, this is a good move. This is a bounce. So, how do we look at this? Let's see? Alright. So, I feel that because we have managed to break this resistance level, if people will take profit, I think it will now bounce at that area. And now we are plotting our support at that range, at that level. So anywhere from 2.38 to 2.55, that would be a good uh, entry level. But uh, I just feel like, you know, with 10.87% increase in just a day in the, in the Philippine market, that's really significant. We just do not know, though, if there is going to have, if the market is going, going to do a gap up, then we have no control over that. Um, just in case. Uh, it manages to, you know, uh, people will take profit and give you a chance at the lower price, then that should be a much better um, position. For now, I'm just plotting 2.38 as our support, just in case we have that opportunity. But overall, I see some more uh, movements going up here. Uh, the next resistance that I see would be uh, around this level first. Okay, around that level first because uh, we saw this price area. This used to be a support and then there was a resistance built at this level and then there's another one here. So that could be challenged first before we move to the next level, which is right over here. Okay, so there you have it. Those are your resistance areas. Um, and then this is your nearest support. So we don't know. What if it bounces up, there's a gap up, it starts at 2.66, and then pushes the price higher even better. But uh, just find your entry if you want to still get in. Uh, but for me, my um, conservative support level is 2.38. Okay. Next. The next one is BDO. BDO is still doing a decline. Looks like the decline is not over yet, but we are very near that support, uh, which is your third bottom, if, if in case, right? And uh, that will be around 85.89 peso area. Okay, we also used to have a support around the 90 level, but it got broken. So now, um, I think. 85.89 uh, area is going to be a strong support because it has already been the third time it touched that and then your RSI is also slightly higher than the previous low over here so that is for me a key area to closely monitor we are very we are at a very uh, discounted level at this point and uh, yeah so another stable company that worth uh, really accumulating at and uh, this is at a good price level of, at the moment for long-term investors. DMC Wow, DMC, you're still at the oversold as you can see right over here but how does it look like? Yeah, we started to move off but you know, baby steps <laughs> very, very minimal movements so this is your support, 3.44. So uh, hopefully we could have some more movements going up. And the nearest resistance I see is around uh, this level, 3.88 or 3.89. Again, because of uh, this one. I see this. 
This could also be another one, right? Because of this. Let's plot another one there. The very near each other, so it's still an area. 3.79 is the next one, and then the next level would be 3.92 uh, for your next resistance. Just in case um, people will take profit, I, I still would like to plot 3.44 as our key support level. All right? Hopefully it doesn't break this price level anymore. Um, there's a slight overshoot down here, but I think that already is your double bottom when it reached this price level. So there you have it. Look at that. Look at your RSI. We are now slightly higher. Okay, we're higher than the previous point. So that's what you call bullish divergence. Almost at the same point, but your RSI is already gaining momentum. So that is for DMC. What about FGEN? FGEN, you already had your, uh, we are sitting at a resistance price level at the moment. So if you'd like, uh, and uh, you know, you want to be extra careful of the next possible moves, uh, we could face another uh, wave going up. Provided we have to start our price at 27 or 26.95 and then push the price higher and then next course of action It will revisit that retest your previous resistance and create a support and then it will go higher so what we need to see is a Confirmation that one entire candlestick should end higher than uh, 27 uh, Then we can say we now have a breakout day. otherwise tomorrow or so on on Monday if the price starts let's say 26.95 and then most of the action happens below that then we can say people are now taking profit because we're sitting at a resistance area and look at that okay so one possibility to be extra careful of is the fact that your oops <laughs> the uh, rsi is now much lower you're at the same level right same area same area but your momentum is starting to die down but i'm not saying it's totally uh, going to uh, decline my, my guidance for you guys is if as what i have mentioned if it breaks out of that 2695 or 27 level then you have a breakout play and when you say a confirmation when i say confirmation we want to see the entire candlestick sitting above that and then you can say it's a confirmation now that we have a breakout play okay and then expect that it will rally some more for a few days and then people will take profit and then it will go back and retest your uh, previous support normally that's how it it acts the next one is glow her globe is okay <coughs> So you have 126 million in foreign buying. However, our um, downtrend channel is still on. We have not uh, broken that yet. So that means, okay, just um, draw a more accurate, accurate line. So what we see happening here is two possibilities, right? It could go higher and be rejected at the uh, resistance area or it could even break that and push the price higher then you have a breakout play otherwise it will just do something like this again okay. so uh, two areas so again when we say confirmation it has to be one entire candlestick <laughs> we're going so one entire candlestick to really break out of that um, downtrend channel. Okay, so then we can say it's already a uh, unofficial breakout. In the meantime, we're very near that uh, short-term resistance, which is technically um, when it touched the, uh, as you can see there, when it touched the MA20 line, there was a rejection that happened. So. I just have a strong feeling that it might continue to persist downwards, but I could be wrong. 
and uh, hopefully it breaks out of that yellow line which is acting as our uh, downward resistance right now next one is GFC GFC okay we have started moving higher but your RSI I mean your MA20 is very near you have 5 million on foreign buying so what we want to achieve by Monday is we start much higher than the MA20 line and so we can say we now have a uh, possible uptrend. Okay, so I'm putting my resistance at the moment which can again can be broken right at this level which is your MA20 line 135.77 which is very near the area. So let's see if it will start much higher than this level and, and above the MA20. Otherwise, uh, you know, we might still see some more declines if we get another rejection at that MA20 level. Let me see. Okay, so if you like, you can... This is what I was referring to. Your downtrend is in this channel. And then you control C, control V, and then... That's your downward channel, okay, or a downtrend uh, uh, range. There you have it. Now, if if price starts much higher than that, which is very near your resistance right now, then you have a breakout play. What we need to see at the moment is for the price to start higher than MA20 line. But you know, your uh, RSI is already in uh, close to the 50 level, so, and uh, you have foreign buying, so we're really looking forward to price breaking out of the MA20 line. So, overall, you are still at a very, very cheap level for a very, very stable company. Next is MPI. MPI. MPI is still not done with the downtrend. I just feel like um, this previous support here is currently acting as a resistance. So we might, okay, we might see some more uh, declines. Could be Monday or in the coming days. Uh, it's trying to break this level at the moment. If it breaks that, then good. Next rejection area or next resistance area could be your MA20, which is right over here. Reason for that is we saw this as your previous support, then it became a resistance here, so I think it will again challenge this area and it will create a resistance. But before we even reach that level, we have to break currently the short-term resistance that we have formed right at this level. You see this? For several days last week, uh, each time 3.18 is hit, there's a rejection that happened. This used to be your support as well. So your previous support will now become your resistance. So that's uh, how it normally behaves. Okay, SCC. Let's take a look at SCC. SCC managed to also push the price higher. However, uh, the body of the candlestick is very, very small. And so that means, uh, I just feel like, like how the previous stop looked like. Um, this is also not uh, looking good. Your previous support here is also acting as a resistance. There, see that? The two days straight. And then you also had some consolidation here. So I just feel like there is a rejection that's happening around the 10.26 level that could result in some more breakdown in the price. And I'm looking at the next possible drop could be, so if we now have a lower high, then if it goes down, it could result in a lower low. So this is the lower low that I'm looking at, 8.93. reason for that is because we saw this, which is your previous low. And then once it reaches this level, let us say, all you have to do is look at this area. Are we now much higher? Okay. So see this? We're already at technically close to a bullish divergence. If, if it goes further downwards and it touches 8.93. That's um, what I'm looking at. 
it could not happen right away on Monday, right? But what I can do, or what you can do, if you really want to validate, you can go back to this video and also try to make that as a habit. Uh, right after the market closes, try to go back to our videos here and see which ones um, are correct and uh, understand the thought process and maybe you can apply that in your previous, in your next trades. Um, and try to also look at w episodes from way back. Because sometimes, um, like what Efren mentioned, uh, he was looking at our um, previous videos and he found that some of um, the insights there are uh, starting to really uh, pan out the way it was projected or the way we were, were uh, visualizing them on our technical analysis. Sometimes it doesn't happen. Whatever we say here doesn't happen overnight. For instance, this one from here, and then it goes downwards up to 8.93, it doesn't happen overnight. I think it will happen like three to five days even. Because normally the body of uh, our candlesticks are so small. And like the US market, there are so many gap ups and gap downs. Um, it's very erratic when it comes to movement. So having said that, I'm looking at three to five or even another week for it to go back here. The next one is SM. SM is also trying to create a stabilization or some consolidation at this area. And uh, it could be a double-edged sword, right? Being at the support area is good if it it continues to bounce but note that a support could also be broken guys so uh try to time your entry and make sure you also check out the uh the market as much as possible if you are a trader uh commit to a time that you can look at it because if um your objective is to trade and you're not able to watch the market then the, there's a big chance that you might really end the end up losing because let us say it's already climbing up and you're about to take profit but you're not present to take profit then chances are people will be taking profit and then you're not able to uh, take profit and it goes down again i think that's what happened to me um but i don't really mind for video because uh, i i'm confident with the company even though uh, it dipped um i know my my average here previously was at the 100, 100 level, okay? And then what happened was it climbed by how many percent was this? 100, I know my entry is around 100, there you go. And then it already managed to go up by 13%. But I was working the entire day, so I was not able to take profit by 13.42% and then it it declined um, but with BDO uh, I have a strong um, you know trust in this company one of the more stable companies in the country so I don't really mind uh, I will just be waiting for the next payday to add more volume around the 85.89 area so that's it 85.89 because um, I feel that it, this is the support now there's another example that I have to also mention. Um, I forgot. My average here was around 7 point something. 7.79 or 7.80. Around. Let's just put it at 8 just to be. And it happened around June. I, I had several exchanges because some of you were also... Um, you were also in this spot previously, so see this, it, it has already climbed around that time and I did not take profit because I was not able to watch the market. See that? That was an 18%, 19%, but I was not able to uh, take profit and then what happened here, I did some cut loss. I forgot which part, but when it started declining, I had to do cut loss here. But um, what's good about tech right now, I think it's starting to recover as well. So I just feel like it might, it might recover soon. 
And uh, this is the support that we have for tech. 5.19. So guys, if you're if you'd like to engage in trading, you really have to face all possible consequences that you can be experiencing something like this. You thought you're already winning, but because you were not able to either number one watch the market or number two you were not able to make up a decision you were not able to take action as it happens then tendency is you lose that opportunity that could have already been a great opportunity like imagine a 19 percent and a 12 percent and i did not take profit and only to discover a few days after market has declined Okay. But if you're a long-term investor and it goes down here, significant uh, dip, then it's going to be uh, a very attractive level for investors and what they would normally do is buy some more. That is if you are investing. So for some, that strategy could be wrong, but for the others, depending on their objective, that strategy could be an okay strategy. Some people cut their losses, some people don't because they all have different needs in their trades. Okay. Next one is, let me see, did I talk about SM already? Yeah, SMPH is next. SMPH. Okay, looks like uh, SMPH is still attempting to go down some more. And the nearest support that I feel it'll reach is 28.80. And I bet you guys know why I plotted it there, right? If, you, if your answer is because you saw this, then you are correct. We're looking at the same area. Because this is how you plot our support. Look to the left from here, from the area where it is at right now. You look to the left as you go down. And the nearest one you see is here. So 28.80. So it, it could possibly do something like this. Sideways and bounce. Or it could just touch it and then bounce. Or it could also break. At that point, if you'd like to be trading this... Uh, make sure you cut your loss early uh, if you're trading. Otherwise, if your goal is really to invest and you entered right here, just average down when it goes down again so that it could lower down your uh, cost average. The next one is TEL. Okay, TEL. Um, wow, this stock is really strong. It respected the support right at this area and it now pushed the price higher so let us see if it will break that then good next stop would be uh, of course your previous high over here uh, that's your next resistance currently your MA20 is acting as a resistance so if it breaks so you know because uh, price could start at the, uh, around uh, 1340 and then uh, if it breaks down, most of the sentiment is really going downwards and it could challenge your 1,287 first. If it recovers right away, then good, that is your support. Um, if not, it could go down further and your previous resistance will now be your next support, which is around 1,249.79. So those are your key levels. Next is Mary Mart. Mary Mart, okay, started to recover, good. Uh, however, look at this area. You know, in our Bollinger Band, the center line is our uh, MA20. We did not make make any uh, adjustments in our settings, but uh, you you could also adjust that. Uh, at the moment, there was a rejection that happened at the MA20 line. So as you can see here, uh, there is a wick. A wick because at one point it reached that area, but people took profit. So I just feel like it will revisit this price level again. 
if that breaks the, that area, then chances are it will close this gap. Okay, so your condition there is it has to to bounce at the previous support and then move the price higher again. If not, there's a possibility that 1.51 is reached. Okay, uh, although uh, if it goes, let's say it crosses the MA20 line, then that's a very good signal because we now have a breakout play, a breakout of this um, MA20 resistance. So just uh, watch out. Monday could be a make or break uh, day because if price goes higher than MA20 line, then you have a breakout day. Otherwise, if it goes further down, then you have two key areas to watch out. It could drop at the 1.96 or it could go lower and close the gap that it previously created and uh, it'll end at 1.51. The next one is MWC. MWC also managed to bounce, good, um, but be extra careful because we're now moving below the MA20 line overall. So your MA20 could act as a resistance at the moment, right? So um, it could push the price higher, but the only um, realistic view that I see at the moment is resistance is at 13.36. People will take profit and then it might pull the price down again. There you have it. So 12.12 .12 is our support at the moment. So if you want, you can just do range trading and uh, see how much you could potentially get around 10% gain. And then uh, just observe. Okay. Um, some people would like to go on a breakout day or they would wait for the price to go higher than ME20 line and then enter from there. Overall, if you're a long-term investor, there's a big opportunity of a, a great return if you want to stay longer uh, in MWC because it's just the beginning of a climb here. The next one is JGS. JGS, well, still downtrend. Okay. Um, we're, we ended outside of the lower Bollinger Band still. Yeah, so I think it might continue to drop and uh, test the uh, support, which is very near the area. That's the nearest support that I can see. Okay, I can I can only plot nearest areas. Um, so when it touches 60.70, I would have to check again how the candlestick looks like, how the volume looks like, and how your RSI behaves. And then from there, we can try to forecast if it is going to make somehow a, a possible bounce or whatnot. Because if it breaks your ME20 line, the next drop over here is your previous resistance, which is because of this one. That's your previous resistance, so when it breaks, it might revisit and touch that level again, 57.22. And the last stock that you guys have requested is Sec B. Let's take a look at that. Sec B is trying to stabilize. Okay. It's trying to stabilize within this area where it is currently sitting at. Where is my mouse? Okay. So that's your support area. Reason for that is when we screen to the left, we saw this, which was your previous resistance, and we managed to break out of that. And now it's trying to retest and probably create a bounce right there. See, that's what I was always mentioning. When we break out of a resistance, it revisits. But no one really knows the timeline as to when it will go back to the previous resistance and create a support right there. In this case, it took the, the stock two months to revisit the same point. So that's what we are currently looking at. Um, see if it will create a stabilization right here and bounce. Because if it, not, if it doesn't materialize, um, it could go back to the previous bottom and uh, create a double bottom right there. Okay, around 77. Okay, there you have it. Overall, let's see. 
Look at your uh, stocks potential. Very good potential over here if you'd like to stay in Sec B for long term. All right. And I think that's it for now, guys. Um, if you have additional requests, feel free to drop a comment and uh, so I can record another one for you. I just want to I just want to make sure that we are all prepared for Monday's action. And um, especially because uh, currently uh, we're in a very difficult situation and uh, the economy is very unstable. We have to be prepared. Uh, the market has great potentials in terms of uh, return on investment, but it could also be very risky. So we need to really study. Okay, and uh, we're lucky nowadays that we have a free platform where we could exchange ideas and uh, people who might know something could also share uh, what they learn or what they know. And this is my simple way of uh, paying it forward as well because YouTube has also uh, shared to me so many great information that I am applying on my trades to this day. So I hope you're also able to get a few insights that you could apply in your trades. And uh, if you have not subscribed yet to our channel, I'm inviting you to subscribe, hit the notification bell, uh, so you're always updated whenever we have new videos. And don't forget my brother's channel, guys, 221 Factory. Okay, he talks about, you know, boy things, uh, what men likes to to uh, to have as a hobby. There you have it, car parts and uh, some workshop things. Okay. Thank you guys for watching and bye-bye for now.